It's Python on hardware time. Okay, this week on the Python on Hardware newsletter, by the way, please sign up on adafruitdaily.com. Um, we deliver this newsletter to you every single week. We don't spam, we don't do anything like that. Go to Adafruit Daily. I think we got about 9,000 subscribers. I think it's the most popular Python on Hardware newsletter right now. Um, I think it's the only one. Um, we have 500 total, actually more than 500 total certifications. It's way more than 500 yeah. now, but we like to celebrate the yeah. big numbers. So um, Adafruit got to 500 first and we have 500. So right now um, we're currently the most certified open source hardware company. Why did we do it? Well, it just, uh, you could talk the talk and say, we love open source, we like to be open. But um, if you just uh, put your files up and put a license on it and then um, use their little certification thing, um, you can have your hardware certified. So I think it's an easy, good thing to do. Um, why do we do it? Um, I'll be straight up. Um, there's a lot of people who say they do open source and they don't. They don't. And so for us, it's like, well, here's, a, here's at least a group. Here's a way that m people who do this agree that it's open source. I, you know, I think it's good to show also oh, yeah. a lot of people say like, oh, well, you know, I was going to open source it, but after I recoup my investment and if the business is successful. But I want to show like Adafruit, I think a lot of people can say is, is a successful business. Um, we employ a lot of people. We do we, we do right by them. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were in a meeting with an open source company and they said, uh, well, we're not going to be open source until we recoup our money. And it's just like, well, imagine. But what if, is that? What is that? Like, imagine if we did that. Like, when will we recoup the investment of Adafruit? Well, never. Never, like, right? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's your, it's, there's, there's always something, right? Yeah. So I think it's good to show you can have, be a successful business and do open source hardware. These are actually two separate things that don't. You can be open source and not have successful business. You can yeah. be successful and not do open source, but you can do both. It is so, possible. The other reason we did it mm -hmm. is. Um, we want people to build off of our hardware and make their own devices and own businesses. And that's why there's a flourishing CircuitPython community. There's more CircuitPython boards from other companies than Adafruit. Yes, easily. Um, in fact, tonight, one of the things I'm going to share is there's a CircuitPython show. It's nothing to do with Adafruit. I, had no, I didn't yeah. have to organize it. Um, so our CircuitPython 7.2.0 Alpha 2 is released. Um, there is some beta stuff that you can play around with Raspberry Pi. I think the cool thing that you mentioned on the show that you did um, was Raspberry Pi also stood for Python. It did. Yeah. It does. It's, Sorry. Yeah. The no, pi, that's cool. The pi spelled P-I, but it actually stands for Python. And, yeah. and that was a big thing that pushed us towards Circuit Python, Blinka, having Python as being the next step up. Because, you know, we wanted to have an interpreted language. And, and I'll be honest, like I didn't really, I was, I, I coded in Perl and I coded a little bit in Lua and I coded in Tickle and Python wasn't like a big thing for me, but, um, but this kind of cemented it. It's like, okay, the Raspberry Pi is going with Python as their official library, as it, it, you know, um, official interpreted language. Let's do it. Yeah. And it's working out. Um, there's some benchmarks, 32-bit versus 64-bit for the Raspberry Pi, for folks that are into that. Um, this is the episode that we were talking about on Tom's hardware. Uh, Joey has this really neat uh, crowd supply. We're a backer of this watch. This is the uh, watch. It's Circuit Python compatible. I love seeing it'll him be work one of on the it. first. Yeah, it'll be one of the first uh, uh, Circuit Python powered wristwatches. Um, and then the thing I wanted to show, um, besides all the projects, so I guess I should scroll through these relevant. There's there is too many projects every single week. Where we are at that point, so I have to pick one thing each week. Um, there's a bunch of macro pads. I think that's one of the things nice. to, uh, to to check out. Um, but the thing that I picked this week was the uh, trailer for the CircuitPython show. Okay. So I'm going to play the trailer, and uh, please check it out. Man, this guy, this this um, mailing was jam packed. Yeah. This is there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so here we go. I'm going to play the trailer, and then uh, that'll be our CircuitPython and Python on Hardware News this week. Okay. Welcome to the CircuitPython Show, an independent podcast hosted by me, Paul Cutler. Each episode, I'll have an interview with someone in or around the CircuitPython community. In season one, I'll be talking to Katni Rembor, Professor John Gallagher, Todd Kurt, and more guests to be announced. Season one of the CircuitPython show starts the first week of March. You can find more information about the show at circuitpythonshow.com or follow the show on Twitter at CircuitPyShow. That's CircuitPYShow. Circuit Use your favorite podcast app and hit subscribe today. 
And that is Python on Hardware. We're like Marvel now, where this is like the multiverse trailer just just dropped. So well, two, there's a lot of variants two, of CircuitPython. Two, two, more, two more weeks.